Okay, uh, what I would like to do is to model problem number two. Problem number two shows you this ring type object, which is pinned on the top, and there is a force applied down below so that it displaces it by certain amount, 0.01 inch, as it says in the statement of the problem. But the important thing is that this problem, I want you to do it, or we want to do it, with beam elements. I don't want to create a solid object like that and then uh, use uh, 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 a tetrahedral element to mesh it. I want to use beam elements. Now, when it comes to using beam elements, as I, mis as I mentioned in class and in the book, it says, uh, it, is, it is brought up, uh, we can have two different ways of doing it. We can create the half a circle because this is a there's a vertical plane of symmetry. There's there's a vertical plane of symmetry. The half a circle can be done as a sketch, and if you're going to go that route, then you have to join it. On the other hand, if this half a circle is drawn as a half a circle in space, not as a sketch, we can do that. Uh, you don't need to join it. Since um, most of the problems that are done in the book with beam, they're done as a sketch, there may be some exceptions. Uh, I will go that route and I will join it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Katia, start a part file. Right there. On the vertical plane, I will sketch half a circle. like that okay make sure you give it the dimension the radius in that part problem the radius is specified to be 10 inches 10 inches okay so fit it there's a fit here uh, ooh. oh there okay and then exit and then join the joining, remember, it has to be done in wireframe and surface design. Wireframe and surface design. Or you can do it in generative shape design. See that? You can do it in, uh, what is that? Uh, shape, shape, generative shape design. There's a join. Or you can do it in mechanical design. Wireframe and surface design, there's the join. So join this guy and apply material to it. We're going to make this thing out of steel, metal, steel on the parts. Okay, that's it. This is the model. So uh, don't forget to save. And then you go to, uh, let me do this property file save management save as desktop new folder problem two problem two okay and now we're going to go to generative Analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. You're doing a static analysis. And then first thing that you're going to do is to mesh this thing. There is the beam mesher. If I had not joined this, I would not be able to pick it. And uh, you'll have to go back and join. Okay? So we say, all right. If you want to see your mesh, right click mesh. Nothing fancy here, you get the node numbers and element numbers. Okay, I'm using linear element. Okay, so you deactivate this. Look at the view from the front, front view. There we are. Okay, now uh, let's give this thing a circular cross section. So here is the 1D property, you can see that right there. You click on it, you say I want a cylindrical beam not anything else, cylindrical B, and you click on the wrench and put the radius in it. Uh, I think the problem says the radius diameter is two, so the radius is one. And then you select your uh, your 
edge. Edge means that that uh, half a circle. You can see that the entire thing because you joined it is given the same cross section, which is a circular cross section of radius or diameter two, radius one, diameter two. Okay. Now, because it's a circle, you don't need orientation point, and you can close it. Okay. Now, let me put again. Look at this thing from the front. This entire exit plane is a plane of symmetry, obviously. So this point lies in the exit plane, which is a plane of symmetry. And the rule is, by the way, so is that point. So is that point. Okay. So let's see now. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, both of these points lie in the plane of symmetry. So uh, uh, user defined a strain for this point. And that point, okay, and because it's the exit plane of symmetry, there's no displacement on Y, and rotations are opposite because not check, this is check, check, this is not check, and this is not check, this has to be checked, okay. And uh, let me see now, uh, this has to be global, okay. Last time that I used it must have been local, so that's okay, and then I can close this. So we have taken care of the we have taken care of the symmetry conditions. Now okay. This point is pushed down by some amount. Okay, this push this point. What I strongly suggest if is you separate these things. In other words, you're gonna say, okay. So let me hide these these guys. Let me hide these uh, uh, restraints. Hide these two res this restraint that I created. Not the real hide it. Okay. Now this point is being pushed down by some amount, unknown amount. Okay. Oh no, the the amount is known. 0.01 inch. The force is not known. So what we're going to do is we're going to say. First, we have to give it a zero displacement. Let me check all of these. Uncheck all of these. This point moves down. Down means direction Z, direction 3, by zero. And then I can change that using the enforced displacement right there. Enforced displacement, I can select this. And then I can give it, what oh, a rotation here. Maybe I didn't pay attention just a second. Cancel that. Cancel that. So let me see now. This one, I'm sorry, this was push down. Push down means direction translation 3. I accidentally took a strain but rotation. Okay, now enforce displacement. You select this and you're going to give it a point negative 0.01 displacement because that's what the statement of the problem says. Push it down by 0.01 inch. Okay, good. Uh, there's a negative sign here. Negative. Okay, now that top point, that top point we already used the, we already used the symmetry condition, but at the same time this is pinned, so why don't I do it? So this, uh, this point is pin okay all right let's go ahead and run it and maybe it'll work maybe it won't i don't know so we'll find out good as i expected that there's a problem here because let's see what the problem is this is a pin it cannot rotate about because of the symmetry it cannot rotate remember we did this it cannot rotate about check that it cannot rotate about the uh, x-axis yes and it cannot rotate about the z-axis good but the way it is it's free to rotate about the y-axis which means it can swing in and out so what I need to do to 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 av avoid, we can, you, let, let's actually look at the deformation, see how it looks like. Look at the deformation. 
maybe it'll give us some hint and what's happening here. Uh, that uh, the, the, let's change the, the scale here. So let's make it uh, maybe 0.1 and look at a different angle, different view. You see this? It swing, swings in and out of uh, that plane. Okay, that's why it was not stable. So what we have to do is we have to say, do not rotate about the y-axis because you can see otherwise uh, the, the program will run. So let's go back here. To take that away, you can create a, a separate, you can create a separate restraint if you want, and you can go and more. I suggest a separate restraint. Okay, and uh, so let me see this top point stop point cannot rotate about the y-axis that's what it was swinging about okay so let's uh, run it where's the run here right there still there's a problem we've got to figure it out so let's see uh, Let's plot the deformation one more time and look at it from a proper angle. It still can go out, okay? So let's go and check this uh, last constraint to make sure that uh, we did everything correctly. This is about the y-axis. Oh, I'm sorry. I said translate. What I meant was rotate. Translate about, not translate, rotate about the y-axis. Now run it. That was the last condition. I'm sure this is going to run this time. Yes. Okay. So, uh, see, it won't come out of that plane anymore. It cannot swing like this anymore. And look at the front view. And uh, let's change the scale to default. Okay. And uh, let's hide all the stuff that I don't want. I don't want this. I don't want these restraints. Don't delete it, hide it. Hide and hide. Hide, where's the hide here? Right there. And we don't want the properties, let me hide. And now let's look at the uh, animation. And let me change the scale even further. So, for example, I don't know, maybe 50, 50, oops, 50, okay, right there, and animate, you see that, it goes down, that circle becomes an ellipse, symmetry is maintained, and now we can look at numbers, uh, how much does it actually deflect, point, Oh, remember, I took this and moved it down by 0.01 inch, right there, okay? And these other things are, these are the usual arrows that you see. Unfortunately, because of the graphics card, I cannot do the uh, average ISO for you. If I try that, I get garbage uh, for uh, these things. This is garbage. It won't happen to you if you have a good graphics card uh, and you do it in the lab. Now, so let me actually uh, uh, put this thing back on to uh, uh, symbol, okay? These are these are little arrows, and there's no problem. The colors are good. If you zoom in, you can see that there are arrows uh, which show the deflection. Now, what we like to know is how much force is actually needed to push this thing down. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this. Where is the place? Which one of these actually we used in order to say we're pushing it down? So uh, let me see now. It was this one, right? So let me activate this. No, activate meaning show it to me, okay? And we know how these things work. So we go to uh, we go to sensor, right click. You you don't have things like this on the test. You might as well get used to it. You have done problems like that, and you. There's a process behind it. So create a sensor, create a reaction sensor, select 
the thing that you want to find the force about right there, this guy. Select this, and then you say update sensor, update result. And you're going to get almost 700 pounds, almost 700 pounds for that. So the answer to this problem is not 727, it's 727 times 2 because the problem that you're solving is not half of this. It's the entire ring. We're modeling only half of it and we find out how much force is needed to deform the half the ring by that much. So the answer to the problem is 700, what was this? Uh, uh, 727.7 times 2 downward. And that's what you write as the answer to your test paper or whatever. All right. So don't forget to save the analysis file. And incidentally, let me make it clear. Even if on your test paper you wrote down the correct value, 2 times 727, which is almost 1,400 pounds, but you, when you saw that window here on the right side, dialog box, you said cancel, there is no record of how you came up with that answer. Make sure you say OK, because then there is a record on it so that we can check. You didn't, you didn't pull this thing out of your hats right there. 727 times 2, and that's the answer that you wrote on the on your exam paper. So let's see now, file, save management. Uh, this is the analysis file that you want to save. Don't worry about these temporary files. Analysis file in that folder where the part is. And do not forget to uh, uh, save, your, uh, save your analysis file, because otherwise the entire thing is going to be lost. All right, folks, please make sure you look at this problem before you come to the lab on Friday. This problem and the one before it, the helical one.